Welcome to another issue of Supplier TV Monthly Highlights with International PV Equipment Association powered by PV Magazine and Solar International Magazine. Coming up in our second highlights for February. In Top Story, Singulus Technologies and Photovoltaic Technology Intellectual Property officially launched 6 PV pilot production facility in South Africa. In Supplier Market Update, our exclusive report from World Future Energy Summit in Abu Dhabi on the biggest manufacturing markets in MENA region. In business headlines, Applied Materials continues downsizing of solar operations. Restructured RENA focuses on solar and other core business. And ACT Aurora wins first decima system order from Tetra Sun. International PV Equipment Association announcements. Koveme and Trojan Batteries become the newest members. TV Supplier Events Update. International PV Equipment Association partners with EU PV SEC at the event from 23rd to 25th of September in Amsterdam. Starting with Top Story. Photovoltaic Technology Intellectual Property Limited will officially launch the successful commissioning of its pilot production line for the manufacturing of six thin film solar modules in Techno Park near Stellenbosch in South Africa. Singulus Technologies supply the engineering technology and support for the key production processes. This facility will serve as a state-of-the-art research and development facility for commercial scale and market-ready 1200 by 600 mm 6 modules. With the new 6 line, the development of modules can be improved with particular regard to the efficiency and the special demands of the African market. TV Supplier Market Update During World Future Energy Summit in Abu Dhabi, we asked leading equipment and material suppliers which will be the biggest markets for manufacturing in the MENA region in their opinion. Hello, this is Solar PVTV from Abu Dhabi from the World Future Energy Summit. Now in our Supplier TV we will ask some equipment suppliers, material suppliers, what will be the biggest uh, markets for the manufacturing here in the MENA region. So first we speak with uh, uh, Robert from uh, NICE Technology. Uh, yes. Um, okay, what we feel, what we see now compared to last year, for instance, is that uh, last year everybody was talking about uh, project and, uh, and intent. And uh, they showed us a huge uh, organization uh, which has already demonstrated uh, how interesting is solar energy and so on, like Mazda. Uh, and uh, uh, this year is different. We have seen a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, we have seen a lot of companies coming saying um, we feel it could be interesting to produce locally and so on. Most, uh, the most active, in our opinion, today um, seems to be uh, the companies from the Emirates. Uh, they are ready to go and uh, they, 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 they feel that uh, they have real opportunities for this. Uh, we are also impressed by Saudi Arabia. The project is are phenomenal. They are enormous. They, are, they don't seem to be already, to be very ready. You see, they, they organize, they have uh, KKs uh, who has, we suspected to, 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 to qualify, but uh, they are not organized. And in the meantime, you have Aramco, which has already made some decision to, to, to go ahead with solar, and uh, Karst is well organized, the laboratory to test. So we see things moving, and Kuwait will move too in, uh, in production. They are very much interested to, to start up production too. In the MENA region, from a pure manufacturing standpoint, we do believe um, one of the leading region is clearly going to be Saudi, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, uh, thanks to the KK program. Uh, so we really see a lot of projects coming on board uh, from a pure manufacturing standpoint. Uh, this probably is going to be followed by, uh, if we just focus on the MENA, by Algeria. Algeria, we see now quite a few uh, projects coming on online as well, from uh, module up to the cell level, upstream. So the, I think these are the two uh, starting region where we see some uh, growth coming from a manufacturing standpoint. In this area, we have uh, different scenarios, uh, but for us, I think that the, the, the best is going to be Saudi Arabia, uh, because there is a big project, a huge project, between to, uh, 2014 and 2032. 
uh, more than uh, 60 gigawatts uh, between uh, nuclear, wind and solar. For solar maybe we can have uh, more or less uh, 16 uh, gigawatts and this is something that is going to be real because the government and the king are behind this. Uh, we, we started to feel that this is uh, have some movement because uh, some companies asking for, for product. Uh, we know that new companies are going to be installed in, uh, in the area. Uh, this is the, the most important. Then uh, also we have uh, some customers in the area of uh, Jordan and Lebanon. In these areas the cost of the electricity is very high and because of this is uh, much more convenient for them uh, solar electricity. And then uh, in fact 2013 they had 1.5 megawatts installed but they expect for this year uh, 15 megawatts in uh, the installations. Uh, and maybe 2015 they can have uh, or they can reach 100 megawatts with the installation. Then it's going to be also a good area. And then uh, here in uh, in Abu Dhabi and Dubai, uh, okay, they have everything you need uh, for for having PV. Is the the sun and the and, and the money. Uh, but nowadays is uh, although we have a customer here, but this customer is producing as uh, panels for for Africa. Um, uh, you cannot install uh, any panel in your roof if you want because the government uh, doesn't allow you. Uh, but this is going. Uh, this is something that is going to change in the in the in the in the coming years. In fact, there are some big projects for the for the Expo 2020. In my answer, I will concentrate myself on our fully integrated production line for CIGS thin film modules. We think that this is the perfect business model, especially for Saudi Arabia and the UAE. Because uh, CIGS or our production line, the CIGS FAB, is already profitable from a capacity of 150 megawatt. So you don't have to go into gigawatt scale like in crystalline silicon solar. And therefore we think that uh, these countries having talked and wanting to reach great targets uh, in increase of capacity and also uh, having local content rules, we think that therefore the CIGS FAB is a very suitable product. TV supplier business headlines. Meyer Burger Group and the Swiss Center for Electronics and Microtechnology are joining forces on a pilot production facility for high efficiency PV cells employing heterojunction technology in a demo system. Heterojunction silicon technology offers a higher level of efficiency than standard cells and a simpler production process. It also boasts remarkable temperature characteristics and low cost mass production of PV modules. The Swiss Federal Office of Energy, the canton of Neuchâtel and industrial partners are backing the project with $1.12 million for a period of more than three years. The company added that it expects successful market entry of heterojunction technology to contribute to further price reductions for PV power systems in general and to significantly lower the overall cost of solar energy production. PV Tech reports that in a continued effort to return its energy and environmental solutions division to break even, despite two years of downsizing and restructuring, Applied Materials said it had reduced the division's spending per quarter to $25 million. According to its first fiscal quarter of 2014, the division's sales were down 9% quarter on quarter to $40 million. New order intake was also $40 million. Management noted that the division was expected to more than double net sales in the second fiscal quarter without providing further details. Production equipment and plant construction firm Marina announced that it would be getting rid of its subsidiary SH&E and refocusing on its core business, which includes wafer assembly machines and thin film processing technologies. The company is expecting prospects to improve in core business areas, including solar, and is expecting new business in the areas of semiconductor production and medical technology. Rina stated that incoming orders in the past five months had outperformed the same period in the preceding year, with order numbers doubling. The company claims there has been a commensurate improvement in capacity utilization in core business areas. 
PV Tech reports that first solar subsidiary Tetra Sun has placed its first order with ACT Aurora Control Technologies for its Decima CD inline measurement system. Tetra Sun is planning to start a 100 megawatt manufacturing line for advanced monocrystalline silicon cells at the end of 2014. International PV Equipment Association Announcements we are proud to announce that Koveme and Shojin Batteries are the two recent companies to join the International PV Equipment Association on its path of cooperation and mutual support in achieving proactive solutions between all sectors within the upstream PV power generation and battery storage technology value chain. TV Supplier Events Update International PV Equipment Association, in partnership with EU PVSEC, is organizing a members' pavilion at the EU PVSEC from 23rd to 25th of September in Amsterdam. Speaker opportunities will also be available for members, and those wanting just a limited presence will have the opportunity to exhibit in a shared space with a banner and literature. All members will receive access to the association's lounge with refreshments, meeting space and internet connectivity. For more information, please contact Brian Akus. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and we look forward to meeting you next month. <laughs>